What's going on, folks? It's your boy again back in the building, Dr. Sean Thomas, for episode 59 of the Be More Today show. We are back. We are back. We are back in the building. And folks, I got a great show for you guys today. It's going to be fire. But before I get into that, as always, Be More Today is a movement. We are doing great things. Uh, thank you for all the love and support we've gotten from all of you on our webpage, Be More Today.com, my book, our podcast, our music. Uh, we're just continuing to inspire people to be great. Again, ordinary people, extraordinary things. That's our big motto. We've been pushing that moving forward. And my mission has been to bring you guys great content of people who are doing great things in our world. You watch the news every single day and you see a lot of stuff. But there are people who are doing amazing things uh, every single day. And my job is to continue to highlight that and to promote that as much as I can, as much as I can. So our quote for today is simple as always. It is by Khalil Gibran, and it says, progress lies not in enhancing what is, but in advancing towards what will be. Folks, you got to have vision for your life. You got to be able to see certain things. You know, as a physical therapist, I've learned that people come in and they're they're in pain already, but my job is to show them what they're going to get to, what's going to happen at the end of their journey, what they're going to do after they put that work into it. And you don't always see that when you walk into to an office. You don't always see it when you have all these kinds of pain, right? You can't see the bigger picture when you're in the woods. But my job is to do that. And there are people who are doing that every single day. So if you're someone who's going through that thing and you're like, yo, I don't see what's happening. What's the bigger picture? Where am I going to be going? Progress lies not in enhancing what is, but what will be towards the future, what you're going to be doing towards the future. So keep grinding, keep pushing, keep going out there and doing what you got to do. And folks, I have a guest on the show today who's been doing that for years. I mean, I'm an athlete, right? I ran track and field, uh, D1. I went through the whole NCAA thing. But this person right here, folks, you have no idea what's about to go down. She is the epitome of basketball. She's the epitome of being more than an athlete. Uh, uh, she is a, 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 a good friend of mine and someone who I met years ago. And I'm so excited to have her on the show. Her name is Kim Hampton. And folks... Let me just read you a little bit of her bio because I'd be here all day talking about all the accolades and the history. She is, uh, if you watch basketball at all, you already know she's competed for 15 years professionally playing in basketball in a variety of places, not only in the WNBA, but also in Spain, Italy, France, and Japan. The transition is natural for her because she saw the world from a, a big, 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 big stage. Kim has always been on the stage and she's been a graduate back in the day, from Arizona State University, where she received her bachelor's degree in theater, but will go down in the university's history as one of the most decorated hoop athletes ever to wear a Sun Devils jersey. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. She's also a musician. She's an actress. She's been on a variety of shows, The Cosby Show. She's been on Rosie, uh, NBA TV, Bobby Flay, Throwdown, which I love and watch. My wife and I watch that show all the single time. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, and she's been also in movies doing films like Joanna Man, which was hilarious, and She Hate Me. Uh, folks, is also a spokesperson and a model. She's done a number of things with Glamour and Essence, with CoverGirl. She's been on a variety of different things. Folks, she is also a spokesperson and ambassador for the WNBA, for the NBA, and was one of the first ever female players in the first inaugural league season for the WNBA and was there for the first tip-off for the New York Liberty. Folks, I'm super excited to have this legend on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pets included, please welcome to the stage the legendary Kim Hampton. Kim, what is going on? Hey, hey, Dr. Sean, how have you been? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm just happy that you're here. Uh, it's my fault. We played we play tag for weeks trying to make this happen. But I appreciate you making the the time to be here. And I just want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all of the wonderful work that you are doing to constantly expose and show people that, yeah, life is full of ups and downs. I mean, that's just the nature of life. But you're right. Um, we have to focus on the good things. And, and um, you know, because if not, it's so easy to focus on what's around us and all of the bad things. And you read your quote. And I want to you know, just read a quote just to start us off. So my my quote is, watch your thoughts for they become your words. Watch your words for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your habits and watch your habits for they become your character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. Mm -hmm. And that's so. 
Mm-hmm. So you know, um, we actually we read that quote before on this show. And oh yeah, it's awesome because yeah, it ties into our theme for the show, which is more than an athlete. Which mm-hmm. li- listen, you've done you've done so much. Um, I want to talk about everything, but we can't. But I want to talk about as much as we can, right? I know you're a stellar athlete, but I also know you're more than that. So you know, even even the quote that you just shared, talking about your words and your thoughts and your actions, that's basically the premise of be more today. That's basically what our entire uh, model is about. And I wrote a whole book on your thoughts leading to your actions, your actions leading to your destiny. Um, that's what my whole book is about. So I appreciate that quotation more than you ever will ever re- recognize. And I appreciate you sharing that with us today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, um, you're a stellar athlete. I know that you went to Arizona uh, State. You, I actually listened to a, another podcast of you uh, talking about your 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 reign there as a track and field athlete. I did track and field as well, so I know you were a shot putter. But I know basketball became your thing as you were in high school and later in life. So talk to us a little bit about the Arizona State um, journey, and I guess what happened after that for you to start traveling overseas to play overseas. Yeah, well, just to dip back into it a little bit, I'm going to start in high school uh, because then then you'll kind of understand a little bit better. So I didn't really start participating in in, uh, organized sports until my freshman year of high school. But by the time I was a senior, I had already won three state championships in, in the shot put. And I was the top basketball player, female basketball player um, in the state of Kentucky. So at that point, you know, in women's basketball and women's athletics, they it wasn't that big, big back then. So I didn't really understand recruiting and what college. I mean, I understood like recruiting and going to college and things, but I didn't understand how big it was. I didn't understand the politics behind it and and, and didn't understand that, you know, certain schools could kind of dictate your path and your journey and things like that. So being from Louisville, Kentucky, um, I just wanted to see something different. I didn't want to stay in Louisville. I didn't, you know, and, and I just wanted to go somewhere and see something different, kind of start and just kind of find my own way, I guess, in a sense. So I ended up choosing Arizona State University. And it really worked out because I didn't want to go to Tennessee. Um, I'd heard that Tennessee was really good in basketball, but it was just too close to home for me. I really wanted to get away. But uh, it just so happened that my college coach, she was the co-captain with Pat Head Summit on the 76 Olympic team. And that 76 Olympic team was the first time the Olympics showed women's basketball. So, um, you know, I was I was able to be coached by an amazing player, a great mind, a great basketball mind. And and I did some wonderful things uh, while being there, you know, a couple of times All-American. And I ended up being a uh, senior player of the year there. And I'm still the all time leading scorer and rebounder, male or female in the history of the school. So to say the least, (laughs) I got pushed while I was there. But it wasn't always peachy keen, you know, either. It was very, very tough. It was a very, very tough mental and physical and emotional transition for me when I was there. And I think. That's one of the things that I really like to talk about because we have a tendency to think that life is just going to go smooth all the time and things should go just as we plan them and we want them to. But but life really isn't like that. Life will allow you to have some wonderful times, but also life is going to force you to grow or choose to not grow in particular instances. And that comes through the loss of loved ones, you know, death that comes through, you know, adversity or maybe an injury or a setback that comes through. Uh, maybe flunking a class or flunking out of school or, you know, getting pregnant. I I, I mean, whatever it is, life happens to us. And so um, I was faced with that because I wanted to transfer out, you know, a couple of times, but I, I ended up sticking it out. And I really understood that you can't control what's going on around you and what happens. You just have to learn how to control this, control your controllables. This is what you can control. And this is all you've got to control. You can't control that person, that coach. You can't do anything to make another person or another situation be perfect for you. You just try to grow. It's kind of like, okay, what can I do? So she was really pushing me because she felt like I didn't see who I was as a person. I didn't see my potential, my full potential. So she really pushed and pushed and pushed. And, you know, once I started buying into it, I got in better shape. I started, you know, focusing more. I started buying into her system. I started to see doors and things just start to open and and things got easier for me. So, um, 
you know, that, that was um, probably some of my greatest lessons. And I always say the sports and athletics are more than just a game. Um, you know, if you ever, ever, I believe the sports should be mandatory in school that every kid, e- even if you're not trying to go to college and play, but every kid should participate in sports because it teaches you so much about yourself, about how to win and lose. It teaches you about your fears and your doubts. It teaches you about truth and honesty within yourself or being able to admit um, what's going on on. So a great college career, a lot of learning, um, you know, got through it, graduated. I was a theater major. And, but when I graduated from college, there was no professional basketball in America for, um, for women. And I knew I wanted to go overseas because I'd gotten an opportunity to play on a USA team, a couple of USA teams that represented I mean, excuse me, a couple of USA teams. And, and there is when I saw and found out that women were going overseas to play. So um, when I graduated, um, I was I was one of the Wade Trophy finalists. Um, and the Wade Trophy, the Margaret Wade Trophy is, um, is the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy but for women's basketball. It's called the Margaret Wade Trophy. So I was one of, and they choose, I think, 50 finalists or, or whatever to represent each state, one per person per each state. So um, I did not win that, but I was in the room. And so I was approached by um, an agent who asked me if I wanted to continue my career abroad. And I was like, yes. And so uh, I ended up signing with him and he ended up getting me uh, my first job. And actually, I stayed with him for quite a few years. He ended up being, you know, I think I only left him for maybe one year. But, uh, but you know, it was great. Um, my, my first six years were played in Spain. And then um, I got an opportunity to go to Japan and play. And then I got an opportunity to play in Italy for four and a half years. And, uh, and then I played a year in France. So it was um, really, really a wonderful experience. And, and that kept the door open for, you know, the WNBA when they decided to start that. I was still playing abroad and, you know, they sent a scout over to see those players that had, you know, had since long since graduated. And uh, I found out that I was going to be drafted in the elite draft. And, um, you know, and it was just amazing just to be a part of that history. And this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the WNBA. And to know that Lisa Leslie and myself tipped off the very first WNBA game and, you know, and this cool stuff that I scored the first two points in the history of the New York Liberty, uh, you know, just being a part of that history and having a daughter and mentoring so many girls and, and boys, you know, kids, um, youth, uh, young young ladies and young men. I mean, it is just, uh, it's just been uh, an amazing whirlwind. And, and ha- you know, when I think back to when I first started playing, I had, I wasn't even, even my freshman year, I wasn't even thinking about getting a scholarship to college. It wasn't until my sophomore year, but I never fathomed playing professionally and especially in America. Uh, I did, like I said, I, I became more experienced with playing overseas, but it has just truly been a whirlwind and it is something that keeps you growing. I mean, life is going to keep you on your, keep you growing. It is. Yeah. Listen, that entire story is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been following your story ever since we actually met a couple of years ago and recognizing I didn't know that you had played overseas for such a long time before actually playing in the NBA, I mean, WNBA. I mean, I know clearly there wasn't a WNBA that was there to exist, but you played so many years there. And then when we actually saw you as a Liberty player, I mean, you were still balling. Like you was just killing it still. So, you know, it's, it's just, it, it amazes me. What if, you know, if you had been there coming straight out of school and there was a WNBA there at that time, you know, what else would we have seen you do on the court? I mean, you did great things overseas, clearly. But it would have been amazing to see you still doing those things here. But you open up the door for the current NBA NBA players. And the fact that it's 25 years, I mean, that by itself is insane. So congratulations to all of your hard work because you are part of a legacy. You're part of the dream. I think a lot of young women can now walk into because you open up those doors for them. And I also, you know, want to encourage people um, as things start to open up, I know that they are going to have. some limited seating in the arena. The the New York Liberty are under new ownership. They are a part of the Brooklyn Nets organization and they're going to be playing in the Barclays Center. And I just encourage you and whoever, I mean, no matter where you are, if you get the opportunity, get out and see a WNBA game, get out and see, because understand that 
it's more than just going to watch a basketball game. It's making a statement. Now, the WNBA has lasted for 25 years, but there have been so many women's leagues, the soccer league, mm-hmm. you know, the softball league. There's so been so many leagues, team sport leagues, that that have not been able to maintain because of the viewership, people going out or people turning it on when it comes to, you know, when it comes on television. So, you know, I just encourage you to, to support because it lets sponsorship know that we, you know, need to be we need to be taken seriously in what it is. And, and again, it's nothing like knowing that my daughter was born into the fact that if she chose or so chooses to become a professional basketball player, she can, and there's a league right here in America for her. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, the, the work that you've been doing for years has clearly paid off. I, mean, I remember going to a couple of WNBA games and you know, the seating was, was there. I mean, people were not in attendance, but the games were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Games were amazing. And the competition continued just to level, 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 level up. So I agree with you. We need to continue to put our money where our mouth is, right, and support um, these industries. And, you know, I, I think in particular about what happened this past year with the NCAA tournament and the bubble that was happening with all the men and women during the tournament and the gyms, right? That was a whole big controversy. The gym that for the guys was so elaborate and extensive. And then someone had posted the gym for the female, which was like a barbell or a dumbbell that was like in the corner. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this now? We're in 2021, right? And we're, and you've seen the, the worst, I think, of the inequality between men and women when it comes to this league and this sport. But to still see that still happening in 2021 on a college level, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, my thoughts are yay, bravo, that whoever took the picture and whoever saw it, um, you know, had the the guts to post it. And I'm so grateful that it went viral. Uh, you know, in this day and age, I tell everyone, just be smart because someone's always watching and someone's probably always filming, you know, when you with the camera, you know, so you don't get away with the things that you've gotten away with in the past. And I mm-hmm. think that it's just been how it was. I remember being in college. Um, I remember the budget that the men's program had versus the women's program or the football program had over everyone. I remember going into the WNBA and I was talking to one of the trainers uh, of the of the Knicks and and you know and he was like oh my gosh he was like Kim you know he was like Lisa was telling me you know what her budget is and, and things like that he was like oh my gosh our budget you know is is y'all's budget our budget for one year is what your budget is for five years you know or something like that I mean. <clears throat> So, I, you know, I understand too, and you, we understand that it's it's about the finances, what you're bringing in. You know, you can't spend what you don't have and what you don't bring in. <clears throat> but still, um, you know, there are other disparities um, when it comes to just selecting coaches and um, selecting people for administrative jobs and things like that, um, that it's, you know, it's just so wonderful. You know, I, I tell people that, you know, when you look back over 2020, let's just go there, 2020. And as we all counted in the new year, we were excited about what that new year was going to bring us. But with just two short months into the year, all everything went haywire. I mean, all of a sudden COVID hit, you know, millions of people, you know, <laughs> contracted this disease and uh, hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives and jobs. And and we didn't know what was going to happen, you know. And, and so it was everything was just crazy. And then when we thought we were kind of getting used to what COVID was bringing us, that all of a sudden our nation goes into another catastrophe, you know, the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter, the, you know, it's, and it, it's just time. And, and when you look back over history, it's always adversity that causes us to move. You know, it's always, you know, you think back to, to Martin Luther King and all of those people that marched just to be able to sit on the bus at, on in any seat or to be able to go and drink from a water fountain or to go into a building or a restaurant or a hotel. And, and, and you know, and so this is, it just had to happen. You know, it, it, it's, it's sad, but sometimes it takes adversity to make us move and to do the things that we need to do and step up as humanity. And it thank God for these things. And, and, you know, that people were filming it and showing and, and that, 
will bring it to light. Because if not, you think about the police that, that wear body cams, if they don't have their body cams on without body cams and without people standing around with those phones, you know, George Floyd and all of these other people would have died in vain. And so it's just, you know, it, it, it had to happen. It's sad, but it's so wonderful that these things are coming to light, but we have to do our part too, as individuals, you know, you're doing your part by showing and constantly showing the wonderful things that people are doing to, to really reinforce others that, yeah, just, just do what you do and do, do it to the best of your ability. And that's what it is. You don't have to try to be me or I can't be you because each one of us has our own DNA. You know, we were created to be different. No one was sent here to do what we were sent here to do. Only we can do what we were sent here to do. And so, you know, that's, that's just the whole wonderful thing about it. We can look in in this perception, we can look and say, God, the COVID thing, you know, we're still here, you know, still kind of going on. But Again, it forced us to look at taking better care of ourselves. You know, it hit the African-American community so hard. And what does that mean? That means that we need to walk more, exercise more. We need to eat better. That means we need to feed ourselves more things or better things mentally. Uh, We need to, you know, just we need to be better as a whole, because if black lives truly matter, then we need to matter. It it needs to matter what we do with our lives and and what we bring in and and allow in and things like that. So I look at I look at the whole COVID thing. And, you know, apart from the people that lost loved ones, you know, I, I have some friends that passed through and things like that. But apart from that, I mean, it's more like a wake up call. And there was some positive things to it as well. How, when has there ever been in the world in life that everyone got to stay home? Uh, mostly everyone got to stay home. They got an employment. They were able to spend time with family and friends. They were able to, although not extensively celebrate, but they were able to, you know, just be with family and friends. So there was a lot of positives in there, but more than anything, if in, if you guys all out there listening, it's to wake up, it's to wake up. <clears throat> it's to talk about, you know, the disparities and in, in, in things is to talk about, um, health and being help and it's to step up for yourselves and to do better and to be better <clears throat> absolutely kim I, I think i'm gonna need you as my new co-host for this show because you basically <laughs> are are just saying what's in my mind all the time and it's true i mean it's it's really a great time for us to get out there and make a, i say a restart right we're coming out of this as a restart for everyone just to be on the same page and to move forward and you know to be honest the, the bubble that was last year for all this team, especially for uh, basketball men and women, was amazing to me. I love seeing uh, all the words of equality and uh, I can't breathe on all the athletes. You know, I think about on, on both sides, the men and the women, and th- th- see the camaraderie, people kneeling before games and really taking a stand to say, like, look, we're not going to just stand for this. We are more than athletes. You know, there have been a number of people, like if you already mentioned, just asking people, just, you know, go out there and play basketball. Just do your thing. Don't get involved in what's actually happening in the real world. But athletics has been that pathway that has united people for years across all sports. I think about the Olympics every single time, right? We as a world come together every four years to celebrate the ability to move. And people have this uh, a claim to their nationalities and being proud of where they are. But we come together to recognize that we're all just people doing this thing together. So, yeah, COVID was that, that natural equalizer for us to say, you know what? We're all hurting. Let's come together and do this. And we've used athletics as a way to say, you know what, let me make my platform prominent. So people know exactly what's going on with the black and brown lives in our in our world. So I appreciate you sharing that. And again, it goes right back to your quotation earlier about your thoughts being your actions and you're actually into other greater things. If we change our mindset now, if we're more active, if we're more health conscious, we can make sure that we can just not fight COVID but also by all the things that are happening in our society, in our in our world, in our country, and especially in our Black and communities. I mean, it's so essential that we come together and continue to say the names, continue to, you know, write the letters, continue to keep the marches, because, you know, as things continue to calm down, we get comfortable. And then, you know, what, what really bothered me this year was that we came out of COVID-19, all on one united front, everybody came out, you know, holding hands. And then right after that, you saw shootings going up in schools again. Rather than that, you saw people, you know, getting into other issues again. I'm like, what is going on with humanity? There's a shirt that's out there that now says, be a good human. And I've seen a couple of people rocking that shirt. And I, I like that because it's simple. You know, just get all the other stuff out the way and just be a good person. Be yeah. a good human. And if we all just did that, right, we'd be just better for each other and, you know, better for your daughter and for my daughter, too. She's only six. But, you know, 
I, I have a daughter and I want to grace her in the same light that you did in terms of getting her involved in athletics and recognizing that sports is that thing that can really change your mindset for how you're going to see the world. It's not just about, you know, losing and winning. Yeah, you have to be happy and shake hands when you win and be happy and shake hands when you lose. And people have a hard time doing that. But athletics is that key to really just highlight so many greater things in life. So I appreciate you sharing that a lot. It, it's it's really bringing uh, uh, something that we as people can really gravitate to. Oh, thank you for sharing that as well. Um, listen, I, I know that you were, and again, historically speaking, um, not just being an elite member of the NBA when it came out in 97 and being part of the first tip off and being part of the first basket delivery you scored, but also representing that, you know, as a woman of color, you you were part of the the first to actually go out there and be part of the WNBA. And I think that really opened up doors for other women to come and follow your footsteps. What was it like thinking about all you just mentioned, right? About Black Lives Matter and what's happening now and what you're seeing now from um, on various levels, NCAA and WNBA, how they're responding to the world events. What are your thoughts on all of the things that have been happening in terms of um, the comments people are making about being more than an athlete and how um, people are using their platform now to really go out there and and showcase what we just talked about, how they can really be a change, not just on the basketball court, but off the court as well. Well, I, for me, I feel incredibly proud, especially with the WNBA players, because they decided to dedicate that season last year to the Black Lives Matter fact and, and to um, honor, honor uh, Breonna Taylor, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and to um, honor her legacy. And and so for me, I think it just goes to show again how powerful we all are. And it's as human beings, if we choose to stand for what is right, the momentum will gather. And it and it, and I guess it galvanizes us to to move forward and to to really empower other people. And I think that's one of the main reasons why it's so important for us as individuals to, to, to be our best selves. You know, it's just like, be your best you. That's like one of my favorite sayings, be your best you, you know, not compare you to anyone else, but when you are, you encourage and motivate others to do the same, to be their, their best selves, because, you know, I might, you might not appeal to everyone. I, I've been blessed to, to be able to, to be good in quite a few things like this, the singing and the, the, you know, and to, to have had the chance to model and, and, and then there's athletics and to speak. And so I have my gifts and my talents, but when you stop to think about it, each and every one of us, we all have our own gifts and talents, but when we allow ourselves to, to step up and to be our best, then it, it just encourages others. And I think uh, you know, just watching the WNBA, watching the NBA, watching these strong men and women stand up for what's right. You know, when Colin Kaepernick had to pretty much lose his career because he was the one, one of the one, one of the few that started it, uh, uh, you know, started it up again to protest and and people, you know, and, and, and I think, too, it's not just. Um, peacefully protesting. It's also having those conversations because I think uh, prejudice and hate and all of those things stem from fear, not understanding people. So, um, you know, I've, it makes me feel proud that we are moving the stick, you know, that we are making grounds and all of us, and it's up to all of us because all of us can, can share, you know, you might not go out and protest, but what you can do is write an article about truth, you know, write an article about whatever, or maybe explain that when we say Black Lives Matter, it doesn't mean that no other life matters. What it means and what we're truly saying is, is that Black Lives Matter too. All lives have always mattered except for ours. You you know, you look at the people that, that stormed the dag on Capitol Hill, stormed, you know, broke in and everything. Had that been Black people, you know, we, first of all, that probably would have never happened because they would have had way more guards there in the first place. And they probably would have been mowed down with machine guns, you know, and, and, you know, and you just look at certain things and how things are handled. I, I mean, I, I heard one time a, a guy climbed the fence, got into the white house, had a knife, but he didn't get killed. If that would have been a black person going in the white house with president Bush up in there, you know, I, I hate to say it. I don't, I don't know what the fate would be. So what we're saying is, 
you know, is we have children too, and we pour into their lives. We want to see them grow up and graduate and have families and have children. And we want to be a part of that. And so what we're saying is, is our kids are being shot without even, you know, if I reach to look for, to grab my wallet out of the, you know, out of the thing, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, don't move. All we're saying is, is black lives matter too. Black lives matter just like everyone else's. So I think it's super important. Um, to to just make sure that we do our part, whatever that means, what whatever that means, and you know what that means for yourself. So I, I feel proud, and I feel um, I'm so grateful that that it's it's shaken us up a little bit, and it's caused us to to wake up and to see at least see, and and more than anything, it's it's caused other people that are other people that are not of color to actually see, you know, mm-hmm. to see all of the Karens and all of the people that that get people of color in trouble when they, they're not doing anything or to show all the people just because I'm in a, an affluent area, I have to tell you where I live and I have to, you know, and you're questioning me. I've never seen you around here. Who are you? You know, and I, it's just so amazing that these things have gone on all the time, but they're now just being brought to light. So I feel proud of us as, as human beings, um, that that we are starting to take a stand, and it's and it's for and it's for everyone. It's for the people people that are not of color to really search yourselves and to really ask yourselves deep questions. Why do I feel the way I feel, or why do I feel entitled in this person? Why do I feel like I'm better than this person, or why do I feel afraid of this person, and so on and so forth? So yeah, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I, you know I think that um. You using your platform for athletics has been one way that you've done that. But, you know, as someone who's also been in theater and in acting and in music, you know, all of the arts, I think, you know, as, as a professional dancer or former, should I say, you know, you can really use those platforms also to effectuate change, right? To effectuate uh, um, getting out certain concepts out there that would be um, off, the, off the cuff, probably seen as resistant, but if it's put in a certain way, it can also be very, very powerful. And, you know, you, you've you used your platform as an ambassador to go out there and to speak on behalf of the NBA and WNBA, et cetera. But you've also done a lot of speaking engagements and acting engagements and singing engagements. How are you tying all these things? Because these all sound like they're passions for you um, mm-hmm. into your 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 message that you're, you're sharing with us right now about being more and, and making sure that we're just being, like I said earlier, uh, better humans for, for the world. I think just doing it. I, number one, singing was my first passion as a kid, but I had incredible, incredible stage fright. I was just really shy as a kid. And, um, you know, I was always that kid that could sing really well. So when my parents would have get togethers or my family would have get together, they said, Kim, come and sing such and such because in the house, I'm singing it up, baby. I got the brush going. And it, and then, but when people come around and everyone's looking at me, I'm like, turn around, you know, no, you know. And so, um, <clears throat> I think, excuse me, um, being being blessed with these gifts and talents, I, I it, it just it was crazy because it was just a burning, burning thing. I was able to put a lot of that on the back burner when I became an athlete because athletics just took you know took front stage. But um, just I think pushing myself to to get better at those things and pushing myself. So I I, I always say, you know, thank God for karaoke because that's how I got over my stage. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think with everything um, again, it's, it's up to us to figure out how to get it out because we are all passionate about certain things. You know, some people love to cook or some people love to do hair or, or some people just get numbers, you know, and stuff. But I think just learning and figuring out a way to, to be your best at it. So I just kept singing this one song at every karaoke and then it became a couple and, and I kept pushing myself and then pretty, then, then I would, they used to have live karaoke. Well, they still have live karaoke with a live band. And so that's completely different singing with a live band, you know? And so I've just been able to realize, listen, I wasn't given this talent for nothing and it's still a burning passion of mine. And so I'm just going to explore it. You know, why can't I? I didn't say I had to be Beyonce, but, uh, you know, why not share my gift? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I appreciate that because it just shows the diversity that, you know, that you have. I think a lot of people get so caught up in looking at athletes that's just, well, that's what you do. You do athletics. But 
you know, a, a lot of us are, are just more than that. We're, we're more than what you may see on the court. We're, you know, we have personalities, we have we have hopes, we have dreams, we have talents that mm-hmm. you don't always see on the court. But when you're off the court, you can see that there's so much diversity that really is in uh, a, a number of us, a number of athletes. And for you, you've had a way of, of showcasing that, not just in singing, but also in film. So how did the film industry um, I know you were a theater major in, in school, but um, how did you get involved in doing any of the work you did in these movies? Well, man, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, I know. And I was supposed to have been one of the main characters in the movie for Joanna Man, but I missed out because they needed us to start filming the next day. And that next day I had to sing the national anthem at the Liberty game because it's tradition that I sang the last the, the, the last home game of the season that I sang the anthem at Liberty Games. And so uh, I was asking them, can I just fly out the next morning? You know, they're, no, we're going to start shooting. You know, we have our schedule already set and everything. So I just had to end up uh, having the basketball part. But all of that came about when, um, you know, as, as WNBA players in the league had just started, uh, it was a basketball movie and they were like, okay, we have a whole league here. Let's reach out to certain people. And uh, they reached out to my agent and, uh, uh, to see if I wanted to be a part of that, which I did. And um, and so that was really cool. Me and myself and my teammate, Teresa Weatherspoon, um, we both got that opportunity. And and then um, I was in the movie She Hate Me with Spike Lee, you know, a Q-tip and Kerry Washington. And um, I mean, gosh, you know, it was just, that was that was an incredible movie. Anthony and, oh my goodness, uh, 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 Spike Lee, because he's a big Knicks fan, um, he actually reached out to me and was telling me, he was like, hey, I'd like for you to come and audition, you know, for this movie. And I was like, okay, you know, and so that's how that started. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We love Spike. I'm a big Nick fan, clearly. So uh happy they're gonna be in the playoffs this year. And uh yeah, well, yes. Yeah, they're doing their thing. They're doing their thing. You know, it's funny. I went to a game earlier this season and um I was like, oh, you know, because you know sometimes the season's just who knows, right? But I say, you know what, this just seems different. And they're putting that work in. So it's just it's just great to see that. It's great to see that. Um, but I know you're 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 kind of behind the scenes for all these different games, right? You do commentary for the color commentary. You do stuff for the WNBA and NBA. Um, what's it like now being on the other side and and really uh, commentating and 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 talking about what you're seeing on the court now, as opposed to actually being on the court anymore? Yeah, I haven't done any. I haven't done any commentary uh, commentating in a while. Uh, but just uh, just remembering the opportunities that I did have, it was pretty cool, but it was really hard. It's really hard to transition out of actually playing <laughs> because I had to continuously be reminded, Kim, stop saying us, us, us. You know, you have to <laughs> you have to be neutral in this because when I would do Liberty Games, I was like, you know, we have to we have to play better defense and we have to, you know, because I'm still associating myself uh, right. with the team. But um. I mean, it's it's kind of cool, but it but it's a it's a skill set too. It's nothing that is just really really easy because you have to learn how to get in and get out. Or say, as a color commentary, you know, you you'll have the play by play person that talks about what's happening and and things like that. And then you know, someone might score, and then the then it goes to the color commentary person. I'll be like, yeah, you know, that was made possible because you know Rebecca Lobo was able to get into the lane and dish it out, you know, or whatever. And so you just have to kind of work on (laughs) what you're going to say. So it was interesting. It was fun. And and it was, and it's scary too, because you're kind of like, oh my God, millions of people are listening to me. It's kind of like being on film. It's kind of like singing the national anthem with 20,000 people standing up watching you. Mm. you So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's scary. It's fun, but it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. I hear that. I hear that. So Kim, you know my my entire platform is be more today, and be more today is a it's a movement um, that we put together just really trying to help ordinary people do extraordinary things. Um, and it's basically all that you've talked about. Make, make sure that our thoughts become our actions, that our actions become our destiny for bigger, greater things. But recognizing you got to put a lot of work into that thing. That you have to actually put some work in because there are no handouts. And um, we've been doing this show for the last. Um, year and a half now, and it's been really, really good. But our book and our podcast on music all just is inspiration for people just to go out there and be great every single day. So we ask everybody on the show what the phrase "be more today" means to them, because everybody talks about being a better version of themselves and whatever that may be. But I'm asking you, Kim Hanson, as the 59th person on this show, when you hear the phrase "be more today," what does that phrase mean to you? It means to step up and be your best you. Stop dimming your lights because others can't handle your shine. 
Mm, mm, look at that, folks. Others can't handle your shine. My goodness, I like that a lot. Listen, so Kim, you know, I, I, go ahead. No, I said we just buy people a lot of, so we just, you know, give away sunglasses. <laughs> Here, here, here. That's right. Here you go. You can't handle this brightness. Here you go. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I have a daughter. She's six years old and um, I would love for her to be involved in athletics. I think she's probably going to be gravitating more towards soccer than anything else and maybe track and field because she's kind of fast. But um, what, what advice would you give to up and coming female athletes at this time? People who are looking at you now as an ambassador um, whether it's for basketball or, or you know, other um, avenues, what advice would you give to them as future female athletes, either on the college level or professionally, um, looking at what you've seen, experienced um, as a female in your experience and what you're seeing in athletics that's happening now, I guess, what would you give advice to your daughter or to my daughter uh, for people who are trying to get into any kind of athletic things now moving forward um, and, and the platforms that they will be hopefully sharing um, in the future. Well, I would say number one, when you're young, just, uh, well, I would, first of all, I would say to parents, parents, just get your kids out there and involved um, and, and, and in different sports. I mean, let them play soccer and let them play because once you start specializing in a sport, you can actually play that sport all year round because you have high school, then you have AU during the summer, you know, you have, there's so many things, but I would say when kids are younger, just get them out there and let them play different things. If they don't like contact stuff or they don't like to run a lot. Okay. Find something that it is. And, and, and hopefully they'll understand what feels best for them and what feels right for them. But once you start liking something, uh, what's your daughter's name? Sonali. Sonali. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, you know, and, and for all kids, once you start liking something, then I would say that's when you start working on your skill set. Because it makes it so much more fun. And I'm just going to use basketball because that was my main sport. If you're playing basketball, ball handling skills at a very young age, ball handling is is like the lifeline of the basketball game. If you can handle the ball, then you can you have the opportunity to go and do so many wonderful things. So I would just say playing little games, learning how to take it around your ankle, take it around the other ankle, figure eights and and things like that. But working on your skill set, if it's track, you know, running to be in condition to be able to to whatever to to be able to perform um whatever event you're running and just work on your skill set. But Make sure you have some fun too, and you have to balance life out. You know, there's a time to study, there's a time to have fun, there's a time to be with family, and there's a time to rest, including those cell phones and all of that stuff as well. You know, and then there's a time to work. So just make sure you have some balance in your life. But again, if you really, really like something, really push to push yourselves to um, to be your best at it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Kim Hanton, what, what's next for you? What's what's next for 2021 for you uh, or the future for Kim Hanton? What's what's next on the agenda? Well, I'm I've been trying to write this book, but I keep getting stuck. So I might have to holler at you, Dr. Sean, because you know, I think it's 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 in the similar area um of of what you're talking about as well. It's about us really stepping out to be our best selves. It's about being able to look at, you know, the, I've, I've titled it Flying Below the Radar. And it's why so, so many of us choose to fly below the radar and not just soar. Mm. Um, and, you know, just looking at some of those reasons, but just also trying to find antidotes and, and finding ways to to help the light switch go off. And, and, and hopefully we'll step into being and doing more with with who we were, who we were, are created to be. So. Yeah, I will. I know a great publicist, so I can uh, give you their name clearly. And yeah, I, I, I always say anybody can be, if I can be an author, anybody can be an author. So you already have your, your title and your theme. It's just about putting it down on paper and it's going to be a great book whenever it does come out. It's going to happen. I mean, you, you have too many stories not to be able to put those nuggets into a book form and share with the rest of the world. So yeah, let, let's make that happen for sure. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. Um, I, it was a great interview. <laughs> uh, you know, thank you. You, you actually just uh, just had me 
go off on tandems <laughs> and things that I hadn't thought about in a minute. And so, yeah, you, I kind of can pick up some stuff and start writing some stuff down. But uh, no, but I thought it was a, an incredibly positive interview. And so I'm just so grateful to have been a part of this. I appreciate you. And, you know, and any final tips you want to share with listeners, um, either people who uh, want to get involved in sports or, again, want to just be uh, on, on your level as an ambassador for the WNBA, any tips you want to share with anybody listening right now? Yeah, I mean, anyone can learn to do anything. You can learn how to do anything. So just make sure you always seek out those people that are positive and they can help you um, get to where it is that you need to be. Yeah, that's, you know, that's it. That's why I keep saying I need to I need to seek out someone who's written a book. I do know people that have written books, but, you know, I haven't found the person that speaks my language. It's kind of like, you know, if you're learning how to play the piano or something like that. There are, or if you're learning math or algebra or geometry, sometimes it just takes that one person to explain it to you in a particular way where it actually clicks. So I'm looking for my click person <laughs> with that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would just say, you know, st- you know, sometimes just slow down and, and try to be in tune with who you are and figure out what it is that you're passionate about. What's easy? What comes easy to you that you could do without even thinking about it? Some people that's singing, some people that's dancing, they can watch something once and get it, you know, and they're, they're doing it. So I think just tuning more into yourselves and figuring out what it is that makes you feel good, what it is that you like, and then building on that, becoming your best, because you never know. You might say, I always tell kids when I go to schools and I talk to them, I'm like, I could be looking at Olympians and doctors and lawyers and, you know, judges and, and whatever profession, you know, you could ever think of, but it's up to you to decide what that is. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I, that's what I would encourage everyone to do, just to really just start paying attention and listening to yourselves. Like some just being quiet sometimes. We don't always have to have the TV on. We don't always have to be talking or doing something or on the phone. Sometimes just tune in and just see what we're getting. Mm-hmm. Those are facts. And I expect that to be in your book whenever I start to read it, right? So let's, let's get those things down on paper. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, Kim Hans, thank you so much for being on the show. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to have you on again sometime next year after your book comes out. We're going to, we're going to claim this right now. We're going to yeah. have you back on the show after you get your book together. And we're going to talk about your book next time you're on this show. Sounds great. All right. Folks, don't forget our quotation from today, again, by Khalil Gibran. It says, progress lies not in enhancing what is, but advancing towards what will be. What will be for Kim Ham is going to be her book. What will be for you may be something totally different, right? Either you're laying the groundwork for somebody else to come behind you and to be great, or you're setting the standard for what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Whatever it is, let's go out there and get it. Grab the by the horns and let's keep pushing forward. No excuses, no handouts. You know how we do. Folks, continue to follow us every single week. I uh, uh, Be More Today show on every single Monday. And my boy T. Farrell putting a show every single Wednesday where it's for life. And as always, if you want to email me about anything related to Be More Today or you want to get in contact with Kim some way, you can email me directly at drshawn at bemoretoday.com. As always, as I always say, have a good day, have a good night, have a great life, and continue to take your steps to create to be the best version of you. We'll see you next week. Peace.